Welcome back everybody to another exciting episode right here on Garden Days. Today I'm going to talk about eight chemicals. Yes, I said it. Eight chemicals that I use on my garden and I'll tell you why I do it. I wanted you to hit the like and subscribe button to help me out. Thank you. Enjoy. All right, first off, let's get started. We're gonna start off with probably the first thing I use as the seeds are starting to sprout and start to come along. And that's gonna be fish fertilizer. Fish fertilizer. Now, when, in order to talk about fertilizer, we need to talk about the three numbers in fertilizer. The first number is gonna be nitrogen. And nitrogen is what makes plants grow the greenery and helps establish roots. So the first one is for greenery, remember that. I put this on about two weeks after my seeds sprout and then about three weeks later, later I also give this to them. It's in a two teaspoon per gallon mixed jug that I use, but that's what I give my plants when they're first starting out. Now you gotta be careful with it though, cause it is nasty. It truly is fish fertilizer. All right, next up is gonna be diatomaceous earth. Diatomaceous earth is heaven sent as far as I'm concerned. It will kill anything that has an exoskeleton, such as your roly polies, earwigs, even slugs. The only downside to it is it will also kill all your ladybugs and your worms because it also kills anything segmented like a worm. That's the only downside. But with the diatomaceous earth, I used to keep chickens, and when I kept chickens, I would use this stuff and dust their backs with it. It's 100% safe. I would dust their backs with it to keep down mites. I would even put it in their food because it will get rid of any worms in your livestock. What I simply do with this bag is I'll punch a bunch of holes in the bottom with my razor knife, and then I'll, I'll go over the plants and just dust the tops of them. Diatomaceous earth is made from ancient aquatic life. And they grind it up, it's shells, and they grind it up real small. And to us, it just feels like a powder. But when it gets on the bugs and stuff, it gets in their joints, in their armor, and gets in the joints in their exoskeleton, and it ends up irritating them. Even with slugs, it will cut their body so where they, in, so where they end up dehydrating. Diatomaceous earth is got to be in your garden. It's 100% natural. All right, next up, we're gonna talk about something that <clears throat> a whole lot of people don't like to even use. But I use it and I'm not ashamed to say it. miracle Grow. Now this miracle Grow is organic and I love it because it is organic. But you remember me telling you about the three numbers in, in fertilizer? If you notice this one, is it has an 11 for the first number. It's pretty high in nitrogen, which will help boost the plants, get their greenery after you, after you transplant them and put them out in the ground. I use, it takes for one teaspoon per gallon of water is what I use in my gallon watering pail and I use it on my plants early on in the season and I'll explain more in a little bit. All right, next up we're gonna go with, uh, let's see, let's go with this. Another miracle Grow, miracle Grow for edible plants. Now, if you notice in this one, it says nine, four, and 12. Now, let's talk about those numbers a minute. The first one we already know is nitrogen, the second is phosphorus, and the third is potassium. 
Now, as your plants transition to starting to bloom, starting to bear fruit, you need to transition them to something like this where the either the middle number or the last number is highest because this will start giving nutrients to the blooms and to the fruit itself, making bigger fruit. That's the second and third number in the fertilizer. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is copper fungicide. I, th I explained it in my other video, but I'm gonna say it again here. Copper fungicide is used for powdery mildew. Powdery mildew on your cucumbers, on your squash and zucchinis. You just simply, once you start to see the powdery mildew, now, if it's on a leaf or two, just tear it off and throw it away. Make sure you throw it away, not just drop it in your in your bed or in your row. It needs to be thrown away. But if it, it, you're starting to see that you're getting a, a good outbreak of powdery mildew, then this is what you need. Soak the tops, the bottoms until the leaves are dripping. Do it early morning so it has time to set before the sun bakes it off. But this right here is what you need for your powdery mildew, both on cucumbers and your squash and zucchini. All right, next up, let's see what we're gonna go with next. We're gonna go right here. I'm, this, I'm just guessing on the thuricide, I think is how you pronounce it. Thuricide is gonna be used on any type of caterpillar that you have, such as like the cabbage moth, when it starts laying its larva in your cabbage plants, this is what you would use on it. You would also use it on any type of uh, vine borers that may attack your zucchini and your squash. Luckily, I haven't had to use this yet, but I've done some research, and as far as I'm concerned, I, I like it. I, I, I would not hesitate to use it. All right, next up is gonna be oyster shell. <clears throat> oyster shells is typically what you would give your chickens for to add rocks to their crawl, or it would also, it's a calcium product, it's oyster shells ground up. So it's a calcium product that the chickens intake to make their shells harder. Well, in this case, what I do with my tomatoes to end up to try to prevent blossom end rot is when I'm preparing my dirt in the spring, I put a heavy coat of this down underneath the dirt. And then twice a year, I also side dress all of my tomato plants with oyster shell. So hopefully the rain, it takes a while to break down, so hopefully the rain and everything can break it down and head off any type of blossom end rot that I might have. Now blossom end rot comes from a lack of calcium uptake in your tomato plants. Whether it be from inefficient water or a lack of calcium in the ground. So this is what I use to, to try to head off the, the blossom end rot with my tomato plants. All right, last but not least, least, Epsom salt. Epsom salt is great for, for chlorophyll, or chlorophyll production, <clears throat> and it helps root against root rot. Just simply mix this up. Uh, I'm not sure the dosage, actually, I'd have to look it up, but I just mix it in my watering can, and then I spray the base of the plants, maybe two, three times a season just to give it that extra boost that the plants may need. Epsom salt, you need to have that one too. All right, listen closely. This is what I use for me. You don't have to use any of them or you can use all of them. It all depends on what you wanna use. Whether you're a beginning gardener or very experienced at gardening, you are an expert at the garden that's in your yard because you know it better than anyone else. So you are an expert for what's best for you. These are just a few things that I use. I use and then I may not use. I have used, but I'm hoping that I don't have to use some of these, whether it be for the powdery mildew again or vine bores or anything like that. I hope I don't have to use them. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have any comments you'd like to leave, please be nice, but feel free to leave a comment or two. 
don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks. God bless.